The chef is important, but without the delivery of the food. <laughs> it's just it, not going to happen. It's just the garbage disposal <laughs> waiting to happen, right? <laughs> Apparently, Katie Morgan had some, uh, sampled some of the, what, do you, what is that dessert called, Matt? Cherry Delight. Cherry Delight. Yeah. And uh, said it was uh, amazing. Steve Catley was out there while she was uh, partaking. Yeah, enjoying. I he, was, he was watching. I, I showed my willpower. I was going to say. Any, but, uh, or there wouldn't be any left, so you're probably <laughs> lucky that <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Maybe. So, uh, well, but she enjoyed it very much. Uh, yeah, and we, we had a great fortunate. conversation about uh, the community, and uh, it was great to meet her and talk with her. So Very wonderful. nice. Well, good to have you here, Steve. Good to be here with such distinguished host and yourself, Rob. It's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I've got a lot of positive things I wanted to talk about today, what we're doing at the county commission. And before you get into that, I just wanted to... Uh, the way you said that, distinguished hosts and, distinguished. and, and you. yourself. <laughs> yes. so I just, you know, was there any message you were sending me with that? I was not. I, I, Retort that maybe that either. seven years is going to come a lot quicker. Because <laughs> I'll just go have some dessert right now, Stephen. You're going to you, you talk to me. You know, I, I've hosts. always held you in such high esteem, Rob. <laughs> I could tell. It's too late, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. Well, anyway, good morning and welcome anyway, Steve. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. You wanted, you wanted to mention some of the lovely things the county's been doing. I did. Uh, yeah. The first one is a broadband investment, uh, fiber to the home project. Mm -hmm. uh, soon, uh, work is going to begin uh, with an $18.6 million investment here in Berkeley County. And the area that was chosen first is uh, west of North Mountain, which is the Back Creek Valley area. There's approximately uh, 4,000 homes there that are either unserved or underserved. I I'm one of those homes, you know. Uh, no I internet, huh? Yeah. Or well, locking. I have it, but I have to pay $70 a month for this gadget that sits in my house from uh, U.S. Cellular to get it. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Um, the other thing that's so wonderful about this is is that they have this uh, program now with the federal dollars called the uh, Affordable Con Connectivity Program where some folks will qualify, will be able to get not only great service, but get it for free if they Ooh. apply. Hmm. So, uh, And then the good news is also uh, I think the state has received an additional billion dollars, and this, these funds aren't coming from there yet. Uh, but this first phase, Frontier is putting up $11 million. Um, West Virginia grants uh, $6.6 million, and the Berkeley County Commission is committing a $1 million. So that equals the eighteen point six. And um, with the money that's come down from the federal government, the other billion to West Virginia, then we will apply soon for the east side of North Mountain because there's a lot of deficiencies, of course, in the rest of the county. So... Um, Probably a very important thing, you know, in today's world is to have really good broadband coverage mm -hmm. across the county. And, uh, Steve, is all that money expected to be used up helping on the west side? Or yes, will some of it be the left 18. over on the point six will all be used on the west side. All of it. Okay. And then there will be new applications presented to get additional funds for the east side. And uh, we're not going to be satisfied until we get the entire county covered with good Good coverage. So. What's your expected time of completion? Well, it's going to be uh, several years getting through Back Creek uh, area, uh, uh, and then once the funds come, I I'm guessing we're hoping within the next five years, Rob, uh, we'll be able to have everyone with uh, wonderful broadband coverage and fiber op with fiber optics. So it's 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 really exciting. Good goal. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, our ambulance fee. Um, since I've been on the commission, uh, I, I serve on the Ambulance Authority Board, and uh, one of the things we asked them to do, two, two years ago they implemented an increase in the fees. It was $60 per home, and it went to 85 last year, and $25, and it went to an additional uh, 25 more this year at 110 But we passed, uh, we passed an ordinance uh, back several months back that if you are on homestead exemption, you, you do not have to pay the additional $25. You're, you're waived that. And uh, that time period was through the end of September. Well, we've extended it through the end of October now, and we hope people will take advantage of it. Right now we think there's only about a third of the people that are on, are on homestead exemption that have used that. But it's a $25 savings, and you will be billed in the future at, at 85 instead of a $110 rate from now on mm -hmm. once you qualify. Uh, we hope by the end of October we'll, we'll be up to about 50% of those on homestead exemption. But I hope by next year that we 
get the word out, we can get up to 90-some percent of those folks. Um, so that, that's another wonderful thing for our community. Um, the other thing, of course, is going to be the investment with our water district uh, over the next five years. We approved a, a rate increase, but it's a very minimal rate increase, Rob, uh, Bill, uh, Matt. Uh, but it's also going to be phased in over five years. But with that rate increase, the water district is going to sell $73 worth of revenue bonds to invest in our water district. We have received $50 million from the state of West Virginia. Uh, Senator Blair was very instrumental in, re in, in getting that money for us. So there's going to be a $140 million investment. Uh, the first phase, they're getting ready to go to bid now on the uh, on the Potomac River plant, which is in North Berkeley County, of course, uh, to upgrade that so they can double the amount of water they can filter and, and, and prepare a day. Uh, you know, right now we're we're about at a six million dollar uh, million gallon of capacity. We hope to be at twelve. Uh, and then the other th uh, thing that's going to bid is the replacement of the Lefevre Springs plant, which is down in South Berkeley County. 65 years old and really out, outdated and needs to be replaced totally. So, uh, you know, we've had some issues at the south end. Uh, but the good news is we have water from the Potomac River that we can get as much as we need. And it's just a matter of getting the funding in place and getting the piping and, and pump stations and the tanks in place to get water where we need it. So uh, they're working in a, in a great direction. And, and truthfully, they're going to keep the cost to the residents down at a minimal uh, amount. So we're really excited about that. Um, when is that work expected to be? Uh, soon. They're going to bid. They're going to bid on both projects here within the next couple of weeks. So um, it, uh, it's going to be over a five-year period. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, they need they need about four or five water storage tanks now. And they, they come at about $5 million a piece. So <laughs> it's really, yeah, really, yeah. yeah. So uh, they've got their work cut out for it, but they're headed in the right direction. And I commend them on what they uh, are doing. So uh, it's, it's, it's good news for the community. Um, also, uh, you know, I've uh, been on the commission only since January. And one of the things I have been involved with is networking with the County Commission Association for West Virginia. Uh, Gary Wine and H.D. Boyd and I went to their seminar in August down at Glade Springs for three days. And then I was appointed uh, to represent our eight-county region as the legislative chair. And so that put me on the board of directors. I spent Columbus Day in Charleston at a meeting all day to uh, to uh, do a strategic planning to how to make this organization better. And there's nothing better. All my years at Parks and Rec, I network, network with the state, you know, park directors across the state and mm -hmm. the state association. I was president on the board of directors. I went to the national, uh, you know, rec conferences. And I think networking is really important. And uh, at the end of this month, the 29th and 30th, the legislative session for this association is going to be held in Capen State Park, which is here at home. And we're going to have some people there, of course. And uh, it's just wonderful, you know, it's for us to network. Um, I was sitting next to a guy down in Charleston a uh, week before last uh, from Tucker County, 6,000 residents. We have 135. Uh, he has a budget of $3 million or something. We have a budget of $53 million. But we sat there and talked off and on all day, and we still have things in common, you know, and we still can work together to achieve uh, a stronger association so we can get, hopefully, better things passed through our legislator in particular that control us. And the one common thread, regardless of who you talk to in West Virginia, regardless of what county they're from. You know, I talk to people with 27,000 people, 22,000, 40,000, is we all want home rule, you know, and, and until we get it. And it can help us in different ways, but we want to be able to be able to meet our own needs at our decision-making and not the state's, and that is really important to us. You know, I went to a... Um, I went to a town hall for Patrick Morrissey here recently, about a month ago or so. And Patrick talked for about 40 minutes or so. And he talked a lot about uh, states' rights and how, since he's been attorney general, that uh, he's really worked hard for states' rights, you know, against the federal government. And so after the, his discussion, I, I said to Patrick, I said, Patrick, I said, you know, you have a, a opportunity to maybe be our next governor. And if you do, would you remember this? The counties in West Virginia feel the same way 
about West Virginia government that the states do about the federal government. And we need more freedom, and we need the ability to govern ourselves more. You know, it's like the guy in Tucker County. There's things he would like to do that could help his community. You know, they have a million visitors there a year uh, with Canaan, Blackwater mm -hmm. Falls, Timberland. So they're sitting there providing services, but the people who are using them are recruiting out of town and not paying for them. Mm -hmm. And the 6,000 residents that are there are the ones that have to take the brunt of the cost. And so, you know, they ought to have the ability, like he said. You're talking about a 1% sales yeah, tax. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, they get a million dollars from the hotel tax like we do, you mm -hmm. know. But they only get half of it. The CVB gets the other half. But they need more funds. You know, they have one ambulance for all of Tucker County. Now, imagine that. Now, what do you do if you have a call and then you get a second call? Flat tire. Or anything. Mm -hmm. And most mm -hmm. of their accidents are on the ski slopes with the visitors, not the townspeople. <laughs> And then to get them to a hospital, it's a 45-minute drive. Well, let me ask you this, Steve, because um, so you know, here's, here's the dilemma. Yeah. So you've got the 1% sales tax puts the Republican majority into a blender because it gives them two conflicting issues. One, they don't want a centralized, Charleston-driven government. They want it decentralized. However, as Republicans, their fear is... If we decentralize and give you authority, you'll pass a 1% sales tax, which is a tax increase, which we as Republicans don't want you to do. We don't want to be associated with giving you the power to pass a tax increase. So it puts them in that blender, and there's no way for them to get out of it. So I don't know how you're going to get home rule because of that. There is a way to get out of it, Rob, and it's pretty simple, um, and we've explained this. 1% sales tax is the best tax there is. If they don't allow us to do that, then we have to impose other fees. And the other fees go directly to the homeowners and people on fixed incomes. 1% sales tax, the people on fixed incomes, is actually going to save them money down the road. And I say that because there's no tax on groceries, okay? Mm -hmm. And most of the things they spend their money on is not taxed. So the truth is, if, if we implement a fee and it goes on their home to provide public safety employees, to provide things, then it's going to cost them more. And that's what they have to understand. And, you know, how is it right that there's five cities in the state that can do the 1% sales tax like Martinsburg and the rest of us can't? And we don't want it, the, the, the sales tax to put an additional penny on Martinsburg. Leave the municipalities alone. We just want it in the rest of the county so it's equal. So it's an equal playing game. And let this, the counties decide that. There's some counties that may not want to do it, then fine, they don't do it. But the ones that need to do it, we have a serious issue here with public safety employees, Okay. Uh, we need more firefight firefighters. The day of fighting fires with volunteers is, is, is long gone for 135,000 people, okay? And we need more deputies, of course, and things. And we can't. We, we don't have the funds to do it. This this would be the answer to our prayers. And it's the one tax that, you know, people don't ha – have you ever heard anyone complain about the 1% sales tax in Martinsburg? I have never, and I've been worked in Martinsburg all my life because it's something you just pay and you go on, you know? I don't drive over to uh, – I didn't uh, – if, if I worked at uh, the, the, the rec center and I didn't drive down to McDonald's over on exit 12 because they only charge uh, six cents instead of seven cents down on Edwin Miller Boulevard, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you don't think about well, that. Uh, listen, uh, you're preaching to the choir. I, I, I get it because I, I think here's the, the setup should be – Here's your taxing authority. Take it and run with it. If the people don't like it, they'll vote you out of office. Right, exactly. But for Republicans mm -hmm. to be a party to raising taxes, uh, that that's a tax increase to them. That's like asking Jewish people to start eating ham. You know, it's well, it's a bit pork. It's against what they the same, at the core the, believe in. Those same individuals passed the one percent sales tax for the city of Martinsburg. And, right or wrong. But then they tried to go back and change it because they saw how it worked. <laughs> the B&O yeah, tax yeah. wasn't reduced enough to offset the sales tax increase. The so Republicans got scared in the state yeah. and started thinking, wait yeah. a second, we just passed a massive tax increase. That's on us now. Yeah. We're not going to do yeah. that again. And that's, that's the fight you're having right now. Uh, I know it's a fight that you think we'll never win, but we're going to continue to persist <laughs> that we try to get it. It's and, worth uh, fighting for. You know, there's mm -hmm. other things the school board has done this to. We would like to be allowed to charge impact fees, whether we have zoning or not. Mm -hmm. We would like to eliminate the rollback tax. The rollback tax uh, is is was put in in the 90s, and the only county that affects is ours. It cost our budget this year $900,000. Well, in terms of firefighters, you're talking about uh, eight firefighters, you know. So it, it's like, um, you know, it's just, 
it, it's a difficult. The, the other thing that, um, you know, we want to do is uh, we want to have the home exemption thing raised to $40,000. Right now it's 20000 okay? And the reason for that is is because back when it was put at 20000 homes are now appraised at double that value or more, okay? So the value of that 20000 uh what it was 20 years ago and what it is today is is not even half and mm-hmm. so we need to increase the uh, homestead exemption fee for the our residents um but you know it's it's a challenge at the legislation i get it i understand it but we need the ability to be able to handle our own issues rob and, and i agree and, and that's what we need and 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 until we get that power um to do that uh we're going to struggle we really are and you know, you say we don't need firefighters. We do. Uh, we've lost four people in fires since I've taken office. Okay, and I'm not saying they would have lived otherwise, but if you have 24/7 coverage of all of our five stations, then um, the chances are they're going to get there quicker and be there sooner. And uh, that's a positive thing. Steve, before we run out of time, I know that both uh, Matt and Bill have questions for you. So go ahead, sure. Matt. I just wanted to ask, uh, as far as that, that home rule and that idea of being able to govern yourselves, you mentioned being a part of the County Commission Association. Mm-hmm. Do, do you get that same sense from the county commissions Absolutely. all across the across state? across the whole state. Everybody says that's let's the one. It. That's the one common thread. And, you know, like in uh, Tucker County, he may want to put a, a dollar fee on a $90 lift ticket or something, you know. But whatever they need to do to raise funds for their particular county, let each county decide. Um, some counties can do whatever you know but we all have issues we all have problems and most of them are involved around finances and we need to find ways to to address those issues um, take you back to uh, the, the fiber to the home mm-hmm. in back creek valley you mentioned mm-hmm. the program that that folks could apply and mm-hmm. potentially be able to get that for free mm-hmm. what is that application process for those folks do you know don't know yet because okay. it hasn't been implemented all yet. Right. but it is going to be available to them and it's federal dollars that are going to be available right. And they may be able to get their whole in service to them at no cost to them per month. So that would be an unbelievable thing for our community. Is the work that's being done specifically with a, a company uh, such as a Frontier that well, does fiber? Is Frontier that, got the contract it is. Okay. for this first phase. All right. And they're investing $11 million of their own. So, uh, and, and you know, it was bid out. They got the bid. Uh, I'm sure when it goes to the east side, then the, they go through the same process again. But uh, – they seem to be the ones that are most equipped to be able to do this at the most affordable level. So, And I would think right. they would probably do the east side as well when it gets to that point. Yeah, Steve, I've, I've, I've known you for it seems like forever. Um, <laughs> you're a, uh, you're, you're a, a county resident that, and your family is well known. You know, when I, when I listen to you talk, I know it's coming from the heart. I, I know you're not just – giving us lip service right. that you're looking out for the county and 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 that you've grown up in and, and invested in um so i look at the fiber and, and you said back creek valley when we look at that that program that they can actually apply for for free or reduced mm-hmm. cost uh, are you all looking at the longevity of that is that just something that someone would be able to apply for in a year down the road all of a sudden they don't qualify for and the, and the rates are going to automatically shoot up you're dealing with federal money bill so i assume it's going to be there in place for a long time that's the that's the focus and that's the plan and you know they've just committed a new billion dollars just for the state of west virginia for broadband coverage and um so you know it's it's the unknown at this point but i know at the beginning you're going to have that opportunity mm-hmm. and uh you know the the there's a rates that will be as cheap as for, even for people that have to pay 29.99 a month right. which for Great internet service mm-hmm. is wonderful. You know that's very affordable for most people. So, so I, it, it's a really positive thing, and uh, just excited to see that it's getting off the ground. I, I had uh, one other question surrounding mm-hmm. you. You mentioned about the ambulance fees, and only a mm-hmm. third applied for that homestead exemption part. I have to just wonder if it's if it's the the reason of that is it is it in part by uh, similar to maybe lack of lack of communication out to people um, when they're receiving their billing. Um, same as what we experienced with our personal income tax um, when we knew that well you only wanted to pay the first part um, because uh, you can get that you can get that reduction for the the second half of your taxes right. personal property, but it really didn't 
come out with the billing that we knew that. So that, that particle was missed there. So I'm wondering if, again, with the ambulance fees, that maybe that's the reason you only have a third, um, as that's well certain, as with yeah. the income taxes. Well, it wasn't well communicated. I agree 100%, and we discussed that. And when the bill came out, it was mentioned, but it was buried in uh, several paragraphs of wording, <laughs> and it was too small print. And next year it's going to be in a separate page, I hope, and big letters, you know, uh, hey, you qualify for this. Uh, when we first started the program, we got signage that you come in to pay your fee. If you're on homestead exemption, you're waived this new $25. And so uh, we want the people to take advantage of it. We want to get 100%, to be honest with you. And you know what's interesting? A lot of people came in, and they didn't even know they qualified for homestead exemption. <laughs> so they went over to Larry Hess's yeah. office and are now signing up and didn't realize they even had the ability to be on homestead exemption at this point. So, so it's been a help in that respect, too. <laughs> And uh, but we're working hard to get the word out, uh, and we've asked our authority to be, you know, get to the media and get to the word and get it spread so that everybody takes advantage of this. For Clear sure. and simple, one page, along with your billing when it sends yeah. out. Agreed. Stuff one more piece of paper in that envelope. Uh, agreed, <laughs> agreed, hundred percent. Steve, final word is yours. Well, I, I want to commend Parks and Rec. Uh, I was out Friday to the grand opening of the Nature Play Area at the Poorhouse mm -hmm. Farm. Fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, project. It's a perfect fit for the Poorhouse Farm, what they did out there. They, they used county money that the county provided through the ARPA funds, through COVID funds. But it's a wonderful fit for that park and uh, just, just fabulous. The kids are loving it, and it's a great place to be. No, no place better than the Poorhouse Farm if you want to get mm -hmm. away from it all. So. Thank you for having me. It's good to be with you guys. Uh, and, Rob, I do have as much respect for you as I do the other hosts today. I want you to know that. And I may – Too much, too little, too have, late. I may have some Cherry Delight on the way out if you allow me to do so. Get so. yourself a good scoop of Cherry Delight courtesy of Matt's mom. <clears throat> Excellent stuff. Hey, thanks, Steve. Great to see you, Thank, man. Thanks for being here.